this one again reminds me that it's no, I think the, the challenge, so the challenge is basically not just on the wording, but the language, the grammar, the style, a lot of things, which, which is in a way unique to the Quran. So this is what he meant by the challenge, bring a chapter like it. So it's not just... But just because if two people have experienced the same thing and they both speak of it, why does that then mean it's false if two people's accounts, no, no two people speak alike? No, if it's the same thing, then maybe the source is same. Yeah, if yes. it's the, if so there are many things. people yeah, yeah. seeing the same thing. For example, right? yeah, for example, Moses in Deuteronomy 6, 4, he says, um, Hear Israel, the Lord your God, it's one. And Jesus repeats the same thing in Mark 12, 29. The exact same Shema that Moses mentioned. Now they both are different people at different times and they said the same thing. But does it have to be the exact same formation of the words? Yeah, in this case it is exactly the same. So what it is, it's, it's not because one person said and the other person repeated it. It, it what it implies is that God is one and they both are prophets of God and they both agreed to this and from this we assume that the source for both of them must be the same as well. Yeah, because there are many things which are similar in the Quran, which you find in the Gospels and also in the Old Testament. Uh, what does that mean? Like the names of the prophets, for example. The main is almost identical. Yeah, even the stories of the prophets are similar. So the Quran has got certain um, falsification tests. And one of them is like, uh, so he mentioned one about bring a chapter like it. The other one is, um, if there is, um, if this book is from anyone other than God, surely uh, there will be contradictions in it. If it's other than God. So if the book is from anyone. That in like the Bible, there's some contradictions and then he says, what? Yes, I mean, uh, so there are. What do you think? You think the Bible is the word of God? I think it is... I think it's the word of God, but right. I think it's written by man. Right. Uh, I would say it's under the inspiration of God. Right. Um, and, but I think that a lot of it is accounts of people's what they've witnessed of Jesus. Jesus didn't write the New Testament. Yeah. But people have written it and it's from what they've seen or what they've experienced from their conversations with Jesus and then they've documented that. Right. So, Could there be mistakes because it's written by men? I think exactly as you said that you have your checks. So if it's something and it's in, in line with the spirit or the person of God mm -hmm. and it's written in the text, but if it's in line with what you know of God and it's written in the text, then yes. But if it's not as out of line, then... Okay, so let's say God in the Old Testament said that he will not change his nature and he's not a man. The New Testament says the other way around. When did that... you say that God's a man? No, it says in uh, God is not a man, I'm saying. Yeah, but you said the New Testament says the other way. When is Jesus a man? But Jesus was a person for God. Is he a man? In his earthly form, he was a man. Of yes. course he is. So that goes against what the Old Testament said, isn't it? Because if you're going to claim, I don't know if you do, do you claim Jesus is God? I think that Jesus is a person of God. There is one God, and he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you say he's a person of God, you mean he's like a prophet, like a messenger? Is he God or not? He's God. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. God cannot be a man according to the Old Testament. According to the New Testament, he's a man. So which one? Because to me, that's a clear contradiction. One says, not a man. Another says, I think you're using the whole thing and I'm talking about the Holy Trinity and the understanding of the Holy Trinity. And that's where... You're never, we're never going to agree on that. Thing. No, but the Holy and Trinity. The whole, so there's the whole concept of the Holy Trinity. Yeah, I know. Even that, you're never going to understand how God could be could come in this form. It's not about. It like? Yeah, it's not just about understanding. It's about even the mention. So I'm not talking about the the term Trinity. I'm talking about the concept of a triune God is absent from the Bible. If you can show me a single man or a woman who worshipped a triune, triune God in the entire Bible, then you can say yes. One God. Of course, there's we all believe there's one God. there's one God. Yeah, But you're saying the one God is a triune God. That is the difference. I'm not saying that, but I'm probably not explaining it fully. I'm saying that there is only one God. Okay, let's say you say one God. Mm -hmm. Moses says there's one God. Jesus says there's one God. I say there is one God. Mm -hmm. But when we say one God, does it imply it consists of three persons? I, I 
I can't, I'm not going to be able to debate this one, mate. It's, it's not, not a debate. Not, no, 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 I know. I'm not it's, going to be able to explain what I'm what saying. I believe I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to the same principle with which I started that if this book is from God Almighty, then there will be no contradictions in it. As soon as we see contradictions, then it is safe to assume that there has been some change. But the contradiction is not coming from the word, the contradiction is coming from your interpretation of the word. So that's why I'm saying that there's, I'm, not, I'm not seeing the contradiction that you're explaining because my understanding there is only one God. You're saying that there's a contradiction in the fact that there's a trinity. That's not the contradiction. No, no, my initial interpretation of it sorry. is the contradiction. My it's initial my word. initial reference to the contradiction wasn't the trinity. Was to the fact that God cannot become a man. Remember? Right. If you, it's still going back to the understanding of the Trinity. Yeah, I know. Jesus. You brought in the Trinity because of that. So you see, in order to in order to reconcile this contradiction, the Christians brought in the Trinity in the fourth century. You know, none of the, none of the people in the Bible ever worshipped a Trinity. For example, Jesus himself. You know, when 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 people asked him, how do we how do we pray? What was Jesus' response? He showed them the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So when he says, our Father in heaven, he's only referring to one person, not the Trinity. So then there are, there's, there's, there's evidence of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. In Genesis, it talks about the Holy Spirit being there. So what, what does that... In Genesis, it talks about spirit, and God is spirit according to the Bible. So then why, so why, if why it's God, then why can't it be the Holy Spirit? No, no, I'm saying why are you introducing the Trinity when it's not in the Bible? Because the Holy Spirit is an aspect of it's a person, a God who... Yeah, but why do you think the Holy Spirit is other than the Father? But it is the Father. I'm not, exactly. I'm not detesting it. I'm exactly. not it's not the Father. So then we, are, then we are in agreement. The one that is referred to in the Genesis is the Father, not the Holy Spirit, not a separate it's person. God. It's God. Yes, the Father is a God. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. The Son and the Holy Spirit. No, 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 God. no, no, not the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the Trinitarian narrative, not the, not what Jesus preached, not what Moses preached, not what Genesis preaches. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe. I don't do this. You can make her define what the Trinity is. No, no, I, I don't have, to, I'm not here to Yeah, she doesn't want to debate the Trinity. Debate. That's fine, look. I don't think I'm the person that's going to speak but, to sit down and give you the Christian perspective on the Trinity. Fair enough. That's why I'm not debating the Trinity. Faith, so I'm not going to be able to debate you. Yeah. Or no, no, that's fine. Whatever you have that's, about that's the reason I did not want to debate, I, I did not want to debate the Trinity because you already said that you don't want to, but at least the nature of God Okay, when God says that He will not change His nature, so for example, in the Old Testament, it but says it comes boils back to your inter your interpretation of what this the concept is is what's leading there. It's not my interpretation. Uh, it, so you it's, didn't read it. No, no, I'm saying it's. I'm, I'm giving you the reference in the Old Testament. For example, it it talks about uh, in um, I forgot the reference now, but it, it says that uh, God is not a man that He will lie. Yes, and you, you you want to help her? No problem, no problem. Hello there. Have we spoken before? I just, I just I can't, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So anyway, let me finish that point I was making. So what I'm saying that if in the in the Old Testament God has specifically said that he's not a man, yes, then does anybody have the right to say otherwise? <laughs> You're going so many steps behind. I don't know why. Yeah, but we, are, we have already told you we'll blur you. Okay, but the camera is pointing this way. Yeah, but they, guys, please bl blur her. I don't want to be on the camera. Yeah, you're not in the you're not in the frame. Okay. So what what I'm saying is that if God has explicitly told you, for example, another example, if God has told you that He is all knowledgeable, yeah, or that He does not die, and then you bring in to me another aspect aspect of God who is able to die and who is not all knowledgeable. Isn't that a contradiction? Again, I'm going to still say that it's down to you how you're interpreting it. No, you interpret it for me, go on. I'm not asking, look, I'm not saying you take my interpretation. I'm saying you interpret. No need to whisper in her ear. She can manage herself. You got a Christian whispering in her ear not to talk to him. Okay. You can go away now. She doesn't want to. She can manage herself, don't worry, she's old enough. 
Okay, so do you not consider do you not consider certain things which are explicitly which are explicitly mentioned? Yes, by God that he's he he does not die that he's immortal. And then somebody else comes along the line after 1400 years and they say yes, he can die. He can do anything. Isn't that a co clear contradiction? Now this is, I'm not saying you interpret the way I'm interpreting it, but when God tells you explicitly he does not die, what do you understand by it? This is, this is it. I, I have my understanding. I'm not, I can't express to you why I feel that this is, this, why I know this is the right religion. Why can't you express it? You speak English quite good. You are, you seem like a knowledgeable person. When God tells you explicitly he does not die, I mean, how difficult is that to understand for anyone? To me, it's pretty explicit that, you know, I, as a Muslim, we believe that Allah never dies. He's al hay the ever-living. God in the Bible says the same thing. In 1 Timothy uh, 6.16, he says, He alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. Now, that to me is clear cut, that he alone is immortal, nobody else is immortal. See what I mean? But then the Christians say that the, Jesus died for our sins. Their central core doctrine is based on the death of your God. But it was not the death of God. It was, he came in a man's form in order to, to be able to do that. So, and that, that's why I'm saying that like, we're not going to get on this thing. If you can't, if you don't believe that God could come down as a man's form and then die, then we're not... It's not me, it's your Bible saying that he does not yeah, die. No, and that's why I believe it, because my Bible saying that. But if so how do you reconcile the contradictions? I don't see it as a contradiction. So, hold on. That's what I'm saying. I don't see this as a contradiction. So what do you understand when God says that he is immortal? What do you understand by it? That God is immortal. What does it mean? He can never die. He was the first, he was the last. I don't know to dispute. Okay. Now, with using that, using that definition that God does not die, and then you're saying Jesus died. But then Jesus died because he came down as a man's form. Humans can die. So was it a different person from the Trinity or was it the same person from the Trinity? The same person from the Trinity was made into man form in order to die. Yeah, but when he became a man, it's still the same person, right? Still the second person of the Trinity. But he still had the divinity of the Trinity, but he was in a man's form. Yeah, I know, but he's still the same person. Whether he's a human or a divine person, he's still the same person. But, your, but, but the difference there's not the body dies. The, the body is not a separate person. No, but well, I'm saying that so what his do you divinity mean? doesn't change. But if his, his earthly body died, his divinity has to change. No, it's not about divinity, it's about his immortality. <laughs> his immortality changed because one for example, if I asked you from the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, who died for your sins? What's your answer? Jesus. From the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who died for your sin? But then it's not the type of. I, I think you're seeing as a you're seeing as a very black and white thing, and I don't think I can explain it to you in a black and white way. I think it's a pretty simple question. One of them must it have might died. Be as a very simple question, but I'm saying that my understanding of it is not the same as your understanding. So your understanding, so your okay? It's a very simple question, but I don't think anything can boil down to it being that simple. No, no, hold, hold on. You know, God says God says that He's not the author of confusion. Okay, to me that seems that God is speaking to you in, a, in clear terms. If you are unable to explain it or express it, then there's something wrong in the teaching that you have been given, which to me implies that it's not from God. Because God, if he says something is clear, because obviously God wants to save you and me and everybody else, right? Why would you, why would you say things which are confusing and everybody has different interpretations of the most important doctrine. What is the clarity that the Quran provides there, that Christianity is in I've already given you the clarity. In, in the Quran, Allah says he does not die. It is clear to everyone. There's no ifs and buts about it. But when I asked you the same question, you said it's not very simple. It's complicated. I'm unable to express it. That is the difference about clarity everything in the quran is black white simple this that there's no, no confusion there's no confusion. no there are things there's nothing in the quran when it comes to the any, any aspect of confusion yeah so good aspect of contention within this in the quran when it comes to your salvation yes the for example the key doctrines like belief in one god yes and what we are supposed to do to save our souls to have to have uh, eternal salvation is 
absolutely clear. So everything in the Quran, there is not an ounce of contradiction in any aspect of the Quran. Is that when it comes test? to the key doctrines, no, no, yes. No, no. So, but your test was that there is no aspects of any contradiction. Did I say that? Then you say the test. No, you're, you're putting words in my mouth. With all due respect, I said the key. I said when it comes to the key doctrines. No, no, no. You didn't say that. When at the very beginning you said to test that something. Is oh yeah, something which is contradictory. Criteria. Yeah. What were the two criteria? So the first criteria was that. Number one, that the book, which is the Quran. No, no, no that, that, you didn't say that. No, the no, it was a test. Criteria. Are you talking no, about the, two tests, the yeah. two tests? So the first test was to produce a book like it. Pardon? Produce a book like it, a chapter like it. No, and no, no, the other guys. So yes, yes. Two tests, there's no contradiction. And the second was the no contradiction. Okay, the I was the one who said it. So the first was to produce a chapter like it. Uh huh. Yes, and this is one of the what do you say? One of the tests. Uh -huh. which Allah has given. So these are falsification tests. Sure. Okay. The second was, if this book is from anyone other than God, then you'll surely find contradictions in it. So in the Quran, there's no there's contradictions. No contradictions. There's, not one there's not a single contradiction. There's not a single... Doesn't matter how many times you repeat it, the answer there's, will be the I'm same. Just clarify, everybody agrees that there's yeah. no contradictions. Yeah. Yes. See everyone nodding their heads? Everyone agrees on that. Yes. Because I don't know. I yes. Read so, when, I, when I read it, I was looking for contradiction because I was a Christian before. Okay. But when I read it, up to now, four years later. There's, there's nothing. In fact, I showed you the clear contradictions in the Bible. You are unable to reconcile it. And you, the only excuse you gave me was that I, I cannot express it. Yeah. Which to me doesn't seem right because you seem like an intelligent person. You you speak clearly. Yeah. Okay. And the I think this seems more like an excuse rather than instead of saying, I don't know how to reconcile it, you're saying I'm unable to express it. That's the thing, it's not an I don't know how to reconcile it. In my head, it makes perfect sense. I just don't know how to express it. Okay, so it. how does the contradiction so make sense? Asked me, my friend asked me the same question here. Yeah. What explained to me the Trinity? And I was like, I get it, I believe it, I can't express it in a way that's going to make sense. Let me ask you something. If no one in the entire Bible ever worshipped a triune God, yes, then what are you going to say? I say that I, I can't. I can't. Say it. Go on. Say it. So I can't fact check that. I don't know. I, but, yeah. Say it. It's not there in the Bible. The reason. The reason. The reason is not there because the church itself took 300 years to establish the. Trinity. Do you know that? It was in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 and then finally established in the year 381 in the Council of Constantinople. So the reason you cannot find it in the Bible because it came later 300 years after Jesus. If Jesus himself did not tell you, if none of the prophets in the entire Bible ever told you they ever advocated a triune God, then please use the intellect that God has given us that shows us very clearly that if no one believes or no one worships a triune God, surely it is extra biblical. It is not from God, it is not from the prophets, it is not even from the disciples and the apostles. None of them worship a triune God. The reason is because all those people died by the time it was established. Now, you obviously have studied the Quran and you must have studied the Bible to some degree, which obviously you take part in, in, in the detail that you've been able to. Um, what do you think is the, what was the rationale? Maybe you can as well take a moment. No, let's one person. What was the rationale for the development of a triunity in Christianity? They had to reconcile all the contradictions in the Bible. For example, I gave you the example of God dying and God not dying. Yes? It doesn't make sense. God knowing everything and God not knowing. Yep. Like for example, when Jesus was asked uh, in Mark 13, 32, what is the last hour? And what was the response, do you remember, from Jesus? He said, nobody knows the hour. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son, except the Father in heaven. So when he says only the Father in heaven, is that clear or not? Exclude everybody else. Is that is that knowledge exclusive for the Father? Or does anybody else also have that knowledge? When Jesus himself says only the Father knows. What do you think? I'm listening, so I'm just asking you. Yeah, but I'm responding to your to your answer why they had to invent the Trinity. Yeah. Because the only way they could reconcile these books, yes, which were problematic, is to invent another lie. And I say it is a lie because the Christians had invented it 300 years afterwards. And this is no way to attribute to God something he never said or never 
advocated even by a single prophet but you're saying they were or a messenger. Reconciling something. Say again? You're saying they were trying to reconcile, reconcile the contradictions in the Bible, yes. So that, that must mean that there was a... There are contradictions in the Bible. In, in the Bible, someone yes. is God other than the Father. So people, they can have different, for example, if you read the Gospel of John, which is a later, uh, what do you say, gospel, compared to the other three gospels, yes? These synoptic gospels, the other three, they are not high Christology like the John, Gospel of John, which only shows us that this was a, this uh, belief in God evolved. You see, if you read the Gospel of Mark, you do not see Jesus being uh, portrayed as an almighty or as, as some divine being or something. Say again? Well, yeah, it is. But before Mark, there's another unknown, yeah, the Q, the Q, uh, what do you say, uh, notes or uh, manuscripts or gospels, they are there as well. So if if I were to ask you, for example, do you have any manuscripts from the first century, from 100 years after Jesus? I don't know if they exist. There aren't. I don't physically have it, I don't There know. aren't any, okay? So what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that if you do not have, even from the 100 years after Jesus Christ, a single manuscript of the entire New Testament, then it goes to say that, where did, where did they go? Who is going to fill that gap? See what I mean? So, this is what I mean about the contradictions in the Bible. The only way you can reconcile it is by inventing something like the Trinity, which came later on. If the disciples, even the apostles, none of them worshipped a triune God, none of that is in the Bible, then you can only you can only understand one way that there was no one who worshipped a triune God. I just don't think I know enough to be able to sit down and debate with you. I would have to sit down yeah. and read enough to be able to sit Fair down. Enough. I'm not the person that's going to be able to do this with you. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.